Enjoy your lunch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. Hi, everyone. Um, are you all sure you're in the right room? Um, okay. This That's good. Discourse? This is discourse on discourse. Exactly. Um, cool. I don't have a presentation, um, but I have some of an agenda, and I can just start from the beginning of that agenda. Um, see, there are three things. One is to talk about how we got here. You're making an agenda. You make you laughing at me for that? Yes, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's fair. Um, uh, how we got to where we are now, and you know what to do about it. Uh, some terrible Python scripts I've written, and some, and you know what to do about them, um, and uh, maybe showing off some of the like what ha moderation tools and things Discourse has, and what they look like, and um, for people who aren't familiar with them. Um, so I expected like three people, and so I'm excited to see everybody here. This will be good. Um, uh, first, like, how many people have logged into uh, Fedora discussion site? All right, almost everybody. If you haven't, you, you might want to. Um, discussion at fedoraproject.org, that's what we're talking about. Um, it looks like this. It's logged into my account here. Uh, I am really pleased with this cookie notice because we were told by the compliant. So in order to get discourse onboarded, uh, Red Hat, as they've gotten to a bigger and bigger company, like their requirements for vendors that Red Hat will give money to for things have become very, very, very strict. And this is like, over a year long process to go through getting the vendor onboarded here with a lot of compliance check boxes and things and like they had to hire a penetration testing company and a whole bunch of so they went uh, anyways um, it says this website uses cookies to function the compliance people asked us to tell you and then links to a something with more information and then it says fine over there um, which I uh, yeah exactly um, Exactly, and, and I was really pleased that they allowed me to make that message <laughs> be that message. What's that? That message was my draft. I had to make a message, and they accepted the one that I drafted, which I really feel happy about. Um, so how we got here exactly, and I'm going to try to make Mo feel too sad about this, but I'm a little bit sad about it too. Right? Um, we, we've known for a long time, we've talked a long time about how the, how the mailing lists are not easily accessible to a lot of people. I, I'm not going to rehash all this. Um, it's it, they, they feel buried behind things. And so we had in Fedora uh, an awesome project, Mo was the designer for it, uh, called HyperKitty to kind of make a mailing list first uh, interface for it. But for reasons, it didn't get the investment it needed and didn't like it really didn't get very much development beyond the first launch. Um, and, and I think that if it had, um, it would be an amazing competitive platform. But you know, if wishes were horses, we'd have a really awesome Git forge. Um, <laughs> powered by horses. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that, uh, uh, so this wasn't like, didn't come into Fedora as a haha. I'm going to you're going to get rid of HyperKitty and get rid of mailing lists. Although getting rid of mailing lists is on my agenda. Um, so, that, but or getting rid of mailing lists as an interactive discussion thing. I think there's a lot of like mailing lists as a broadcast platform or as notifications. I think are going to be around for a while until um, the big companies destroy email completely. Which I don't know. Ten years, we'll see. Um, but um, we, we had a platform that had a thing called Ask Fedora, which was modeled on Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow. Uh, my phone is doing lots of notifications. Maybe people are tagging me on things. Let's, um, <laughs> and uh, it was going pretty well in terms of the community, but the software we used was a, was a you know, open source thing called AskBot, which is kind of a clone of what Stack Exchange looks like. Um, but it had really none of the like back end things, and it just uh, it didn't really understand the things that have made Stack Overflow successful uh, as a as a thing, which that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but also, it, it was, ended up being maintained by one person who was not really doing very much with it, and we couldn't get any new features. Nothing was happening. They you know, weren't even accepting pull requests very well. So that was basically dying off. Uh, we actually even paid that person for a while to try and get things moving, but it didn't go anywhere. So they decided they wanted something else and decided on discourse as a thing. And at the time, uh, Sonia 
Bunnick was the uh, community manager for uh, f uh, like the uh, Project Atomic stuff, and uh, she wanted a place to talk about uh, like Silver Blue, and which was an emerging thing at the time, and you know, some of the CoreOS, Fedora CoreOS stuff. And so she said, let's set this up. And I said, why don't we set it up as a general thing? And this is one of the places where I made most sad. I'm sorry, because I just set it up with um, dis you know, discussion at fedoraproject.org. And uh, I, you know, maybe could have done more, dis more discussion beforehand. I'm sorry. It wasn't meant to be a surprise like that. Um, but uh, it has kind of gained in popularity, and a lot of people are using it. And uh, at this point, I think it is really the best candidate for a primary uh, asynchronous discussion platform for the project. Um, skepticism is, is okay, uh, but uh, I think it has, it has a lot of nice features and also it's a lot of other open source projects are really, uh, I don't know, um, standardizing is not, maybe not quite right, but like Python switched to this as their main thing. You know, uh, uh, like all their mailing, they, they got rid of their mailing lists. Um, you know, Ansible, um, I've got an Ansible person right behind you there, Mo, um, is going there. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other projects that use this, um, either in conjunction to mailing lists or instead of mailing lists. A lot of newer projects um, had, you know, not setting up mailing lists at all. Um, I only have one of, my, one of my pitches for why this is a uh, important thing. Um, a lot of people were moving away from Fedora mailing lists to basically using GitForge trackers as their mailing lists for things. So we have people basically using GitHub, GitLab, Pagger, whatever, for their teams, things, which is, which is fine for a lot of things, but those aren't really very good. Like if things get big, there's no threading or anything like that. There's not, there's not moderation tools. There's a lot of, they're not really meant for extended discussion. They're meant for, you know, tracking issues. Uh, and Worse than that, let alone whether they're good or bad tools, they're scattered all over the place. And there's a whole bunch of, like one of the things people on the mailing list, the develop list, are talking about um, how you know, people moving you know, away from mailing lists, which all come to your inbox, to discourse sites, which are all in different places, feels more scattered. But I think we were really already getting more scattered because you had, there are a bunch of, if you wanted to follow a lot of things, there are just a bunch of different like get trackers somewhere that you have to follow in order to follow a lot of what's going on, like you know core OS stuff in one place. What's that? Those, those, well, this can go to your, these can go to your email too, right? Um, yeah. So Mo, Mo doesn't think the email interface is very good, um, but what's that? Yeah. So some of the so um, yeah 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 uh, um, yeah. So uh, there's. Uh, I don't know, we could talk about that a little bit, but um, they're actually, you should be able to filter this pretty well. Um, so, yeah, well, so, so, uh, so and, and the problem with should is Google, right? Uh, because, so if you're using anything else to filter your emails, uh, Discourse puts useful and meaningful headers into the mail that can be used to filter this very effectively and nicely. Um, Uh, <laughs> sure, I would, I, I, that, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I know um, th there are some scripts that will you, that if you, if you happen to be using enterprise Gmail, that you can actually uh, run, there's a scripting thing that can run, and you can run it like every, I don't, I don't know what the, how fast you can run it, but it will take your mail and can, can actually process it in more complicated ways, and so we, th there's a script. It's on, actually on. Um, I don't know if it, I'm going to find it here quickly. What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It, it is not. Um, <laughs> this is, yeah, there we go. Look at that. So. So if you don't use Gmail, like whatever your mail client should be able to filter on the headers. What 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 are you using for your and they don't, I, I would be shocked if Colab can't do this. Colab can filter on any header you want. Yeah, so hold on. Uh, I have tried to filter okay. Fedora discourse every which way. I've been promised it's possible, it's possible, okay. it's not. I've just given up. I'm not putting any more hours into that. It's okay. can, I, can I sit down with you and, and look at it? If you do it, I'll, I'll take it. 
Okay. Okay. So um, if uh, can hear. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and so. Um, and so you're trying to translate between two languages uh, not very compatible, or you're trying to filter it. So even that, yes, you can technically check a box and say it's still filterable, but it's not native speech. It's like reading a Google Translate of English. Maybe. And then once you start yeah. to use some features of yeah. the discourse, such as uh, reactions, that completely does not translate emails, yeah. which means that. Yeah, right. So, so, yeah, so this is a design difference between HyperKitty and Discourse, which is an intentional different direction they went. So Discourse is, although you can interact with the email, it is definitely a web interface, app interface first. Um, and uh, because of that, it, it, there are some things, it, it isn't limited to things that are easily sent through email, right? Which, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Could a mailing list feed into discourse? Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. In fact, um, we have that. We have that. So this announce list here is announce list feeding into disc discourse here. So could we not do that? So. I would have no problem because I get my way and. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I would have no problem. If so I could stay with a mailing list and people could interact with me through discourse and I never have to log so, in or deal so, with its email so interface. The problem is it doesn't go back. It, it doesn't go back the other way very well. It's not a, it's not a good two-way integration. Oh, because WordPress does with the so comments, the word, well, right? So the, no, the WordPress, we've turned off the comments on WordPress. Oh. So the, word, the comments on WordPress are coming from, from Discourse. So it's a, it's, it is still a, it's a one way from, one, the articles go one way and the comments go back the other way. Okay. And it's not a, so it's not a, yeah, it's not a cycle. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks for humoring me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I, I grew up on mailing lists, and I've come to find this, uh, the web interface, a better approach because, um, who was I talking to? Someone I was talking to just the other day was saying that here, here at Flock, that you know they've gotten into the habit of here are they, they had like I, I'm going to my mailing list in these folders in my you know web mail, and instead I'm going you know I have these are my discourse sites that I have bookmarks that I go to and just kind of slightly different workflow. And that's basically what I've adjusted to as well. Yeah. yeah. What's it? That there is a deep point, which is if a person is like 99.9% .9 involved in just one community, what you are saying is totally true. If you are involved in mm -hmm. 10 different communities, it's completely broken as a promise. Yeah. Uh, because I, I cannot go to 10 different instances of this course. I, I, I actually, I actually, yeah, I find that, I find that, um, for me, that's... Why do you go to 10 different discourses? Uh, because I have work, you know? But I have a hundred email folders, and I couldn't read all of those. Yeah. It's the same problem, it's just in a different interface. Well, you're not going to be able to read everything. Yeah, but with Whichever email, you can well, pop off the topics that you care about. Control J, Control J, Control J, Control J, and then I've gone through my email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mentioned this in the, uh, the Meet Your Fesco session that an observation I've made is we're kind of balkanizing the community where you have long-term or long-time technical users who have an established workflow who are also expected to live in high traffic mailing lists. You're creating another thing for them that they already had a workflow for. And what that's leading them to is to ignore this. So we've shifted the participation from one subset of Fedora to another. And I don't, like, I'm not opposed to something new, but we have to solve the bridging problem. Like, we, we, ha we can't alienate the established workflows, at, like, as much as possible, because we still want those users to participate. And this, this, is, this is just like what's happening internal at Red Hat, where we have multiple chat systems and all this bullshit going on that we have to check multiple places, and it only adds more work for everyone involved. 
Like, I still have to live on IRC for upstream communities. It's beautiful that we're on Matrix. Great, awesome. Nowhere else is doing that. Internally, we aren't even doing that either. And I have to live on two chat systems internally that can't talk to each other. So this is, like, new stuff is fine, but we have to have that bridging effort so that we don't break workflows for people. Well, there's some, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do use uh, email, but in to to your point, uh, I don't use Gmail. So I, you know, if you use Gmail, so then you're kind of stuck, right? Or you have to use the script, or whatever. But yeah, uh, email works for me. It's it list ID. It's just like I'm subscribed to a list. I do miss out on like reactions, polls, things that don't translate, you know, to emails. But other than that, it just is another folder, and I reply to it, and it, it all just works. But that's, that's a different investment in, in infrastructure that I've made that... So, yeah, it, it, that's awesome. It works for you. I have all of my Fedora email go to redhat.com, my redhat.com account, which I don't... Yeah, I don't get to choose where that lives. Sure, sure. So I could go and shift all of my Fedora community involvement to my personal email account and, and, and ga gain that filtering. And, and that would be great, but I mean, I already have a workflow. Like the, that's, yeah. that's the concern I have. And I, I know I'm not the only one yeah. impacted by yeah. this. Well, and the other thing is that if you do the email, I mean, it's 90% of the stuff going through there is stuff I don't care about and I have no involvement with. And it's for that little bit, I've just shifted to using Matrix. And I just ignore this because I have, I've tried so much. Like I know, you know that I've tried. You know that yeah. I have. I can't, I can't do it. I just can't. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. like. There's too many So, so, so uh, maybe to answer a bit. I mean, I don't use, uh, I use a method where I get notifications to email. And if I want to look at polls, reactions, or to reply, then I go to the, click on the link and go to the web. And I think that's, uh, I mean, like, in my workflow, I read a thousand messages and reply to them every maybe two out of that. And this this isn't really, this isn't, this isn't really that much different than the the old workflow. And uh, like Matthew said, I don't know, like the, the same thing happened with Pajur and GitHub and GitLab already. So it wasn't like I was able to do everything from the mail client. Uh, you you, ha you had to go from mail to other places all the time anyway. Yeah, like for GitHub, like GitHub has reactions that you can only, you have to go to the website to do those. You can't do the reactions through, you don't see the reactions, all right? I don't so, think the reactions are what's important. I think it's just, I'm in one system and I'm just skimming through and evaluating. Mm -hmm. And I can't get that skim through evaluation yeah, from the can. emails that, the, no. You can't. And so the only way I can use yeah. it and read through it is to go to the website. And the problem is the website is so cluttered and disorganized that I can't find what I actually care about. Like, tell me right now. Like before, at least with a mailing list, I could go the design team list, and that was a place. It's, this has so many yeah. like tags and categories and nonsense. Like well, it doesn't feel like well, there's a place. Yeah. So. Um, so how many layers? How many clicks do we have to make to get to design team? Can you see design team? I don't even think I see it. So yeah, this page needs help, but there it is right there. Um, okay. So, so there, so this is the design team space right there. And you could also get that, you could get that another way would be to go to all categories and then. But when somebody posts something. You can subscribe to the tag. Yeah, so, so, and this is actually. But when you post something, you have to know to tag it with the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but, but if you were in this, if you were on this page and you hit new topic, it, um, it will, it comes up that way. But so, you have to know, and like when I'm posting on there, and actually I'm in like, the wrong place, but. am I going to make a faux pas if I tag in like so, yeah, workstation? Yeah. Are they going to get mad right. at me? And like you, you have a limit of only five tags, and I don't even yeah. know. So, uh, so in the in the so this is part of some of this is I I, I wrote a post right uh, about which is um, in the help go away this thing please. Oh, is this the one I could never find? Maybe. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, so, 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 no, uh, the one you could never find was the email one, right? The email one. But uh, this is the navigation guide linked right there. So this talks, 
I, I've tried to put that there in, I don't know, if you have suggestions on how I can improve this, I would be happy to do that. But it, yeah, it is, it is adapting to something new. And I think there's some part about that. I want to make sure we accommodate uh, people's workflows as much as possible. But like, I think that making it entirely the same without any change, like things change and I want to bring people along, but we've got to be able to have some, like so there's got to be some adapting. So that's, you but, know, we can complain about the interface all we want and how it fits into my workflow or it doesn't. I can make it fit, uh, you know, that's the option. But the bigger problem is I think exactly what, what David said. You know, we've got this split now. You have people who are participating yeah. on the email list. Yeah, I've logged into here. Um, I don't yeah. regularly, it's not part of my workflow. I do read the email list and I can interact on that. But you've got a group of people who are interacting on email lists. You have a group of people who are interacting on this. And there's very little crossover between. Yeah. Um, I would like to bring everyone here. That's my agenda. Um, I think that's the solution to it. Because I think it is the best common ground of the things. I that's think it needs, it's not a tech problem. It's a social glue problem. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to um, the Ansible guys. Mm -hmm. And we made, like we had this idea, well, for example, if um, you're in Matrix and somebody mm -hmm. asks a question, and then you have helpful answers. It's lost in the ether because that's a very um, synchronous medium. So could there be a way to have a bot that you hit an emoji and it makes a post to discourse? Y yeah. And it becomes like, if you can bridge, and that's what I think David means by bridging. I'll get back to that, actually. Okay, because it's yeah. a social glue. Like, let's let Adam behind you because he's been waiting to talk for like forever. <laughs> I've been like saving your comments for the... Uh, the, I'm the I'm wondering whether I might tell a story briefly and perhaps ask you to do a little demonstration at the same time. Uh, okay. Trust me. Trust me. Could you, could you open a new tab? Maybe. Yeah. And could you go to community.theforman.org, please? Uh, no, I can't type. <laughs> so I have heard all of the things you have said five years ago. And I've said I moved this community to discourse five years ago. Could you go to the search, please? I have to, yours just says, got it. M mine's way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is ancient. Um, could, you, could, you just, could you just put, put in discourse proposal? So I'm going to demonstrate the search here. Uh, it should be pretty, there you go, the second one. Second one from November 17. This was me proposing this community move from mailing lists to a forum five years ago. It's a very long thread. I'm not proposing you read through it. I had an extremely vocal community member who was absolutely adamant that mailing lists were really important, that we really didn't want to break people's workflows, and that we really, really had to consider this carefully. In the end, I convinced the community at large, not that particular person, that, um, that we had to do this. And after three months of testing, we shut down the mailing list and migrated the entire archive into discourse and moved the whole thing over. Within three months, he came back to me and apologized, and he was a huge fan. <laughs> so, yeah. The converts, that's how you, yeah. So I, I absolutely hear you. I know where you're coming from. I've done that with one community before. It is definitely possible, but it is also going, there's always going to be somebody affected by it. There's no way around that. I do that's it. Both. Yeah. fine. So, I, I don't feel like we have a good answer. Yeah. Right, right. So, so the mailing list thing is, is, is being able to work with it by email is what most people tested. We did extensive testing on whether threading works properly with the emails that come out of discourse. They do. Um, you can definitely say so the, the list ID thing is a problem with Gmail. I completely agree, but oh my goodness, trying to fix that is a pain in the neck. Um, Um, the threading works in that, you know, the in reply to headers are set correctly, so they show up properly, but like if I'm on my phone reading the mailing list, I can see the context of it because, you know, people, uh, you know, quote the end, whereas I cannot uh, do that with discourse. Yeah, I think we have the setting. That, that's for, a setting. Yeah. But just to quickly, to, to quickly finish the point that the Mo is making is there's definitely integration you can do with other systems. So we have got chat integration set up for posting things from Discourse to Matrix yeah. on our test setup. We're um, looking, as you said, at whether we can go the other way. Um, and I definitely want to see us doing some more GitHub integration within the Ansible space as well. Um, although we have to be careful exactly how much because there's obviously a lot of traffic there. But um, there's definitely ways to bring people along and to remind them that conversation is going on in other places. 
Okay, the thing of is my screen above or below the other screen, that's maybe the most annoying thing about how, here we go. I just wanted to make the point, um, the balkanization is happening anyway, and it was happening before this happened. We had groups of people talking in Telegram, we have groups of people talking on Discord. So I don't think we avoid the balkanization by just not doing this, because people are not, people who don't want to use mailing lists will not use mailing lists. Even if there isn't an official alternative, they'll come up with another one. So I don't think we can not have balkanization. I think it's an insolvable problem. I, I want to show the chat channel, but I've got a whole bunch of private personal messages today on Matrix, so I don't want to show. But um, we actually have, if you look in the announce thing, that is actually, um, our, we, we have some of them set up so that posts from discourse go to Matrix channels. And I talked to you before, but then I dropped. We can, we can do some of that for the other posts as well, so they go to, the, to Matrix, and we could also make a matrix bot that goes the other way around. There are a bunch of other things. So like basically every, every if, people, if people are feeling programmy, um, if you put .json on the end of anything, you will get a, you know, a data structure that represents that post with a lot of information and that can be used for developing any kind of complicated thing. There's also RSS feed equivalent of the same thing. Uh, for stuff that you don't you don't have to do the developing, um, I think it would be lovely if somebody would use this and make a uh, NNTP gateway for it because it wouldn't actually be that hard. It's like a week's project of intensive, crazy programming um, because all the stuff you need to do it is actually there. Uh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, w yeah, right. So um, some some somebody somebody wants to work work on that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, Tim in the back there too. Yeah, I guess oh, uh, part of the problem with this change is that it's like a huge culture shock. Like part of the thing about Matrix, which you know I appreciate it, is you know the bridge is definitely not perfect. There's <laughs> problems with it, yeah. but people could kind of come from where they were, whether they were a traditional IRC user and a Matrix user, and you know, it kind of allowed people to test the waters and slowly you saw more and more people you know, coming over to Matrix and getting more comfortable with it. Well, I think you know, the problem with this discourse thing is just it's you know, a really big culture shock and a big switch and the whole tags thing is very foreign to people. And you know, the email interface is there, but it's not perfect. So I think we kind of need some way to, you know, have a transition without, you know, fracturing things too much. Um, and I guess I'm not sure the current proposals that I'm hearing are exactly going to accomplish that. I just wanted to address the thing you said about, yeah, it's gonna be simple to do an NTP. Uh, I am try I, the first, when you first made your thing about, oh, I wanna get rid of the mailing lists and move to discourse, that's one of the first things I looked into. Someone started and never finished, which does not give me a good feeling about whether it's actually possible. So, so actually, the thing that would be easy, easy, is the NNTP read view of it. The thing that's hard is making a posting back part. Okay. And, and I, I, I didn't and get that far into it because that's the first thing I thought is like, well, you know, this feels like news groups. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe there's a way to do this so I can have my client and I don't have to be, uh, you know, complain about the, the web interface and that kind of stuff. But I found that someone tried to do it as part of a migration and they never mm -hmm. finished it and it never actually worked. Yeah. So I'm not sure, I'm, I'm worried it's not as simple as you think it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, most of the internet is littered with people's projects they started that never got well, finished, so. Uh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never started a project yeah. never uh, finished I it. I, <laughs> <laughs> Aoife? Uh, so I have a question to the gentleman who actually spoke about, was it the, the other discourse um, platform? How long did it take for your community to like, get a bit more okay with conversing there? Like was it three months, six months, a year? Are they still kind of upset about it? And to follow up, and I'll let you finish that, but where I'm going with it is to like the general Fedora community, would we not as good people inherently just try and give this a chance? <laughs> four years, something like that, and there's been increasing adaptation of it all along. Like it's been, I mean, that's, 
uh, it, it has grown significantly. I think it's one of those curve things, right? It's so been here for a while, but it's been like this, and now we're in the middle of this part, so it's more. <laughs> yeah. So, so. Yeah. Um, to un right, right. Yeah. No. Yeah, wait, 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 sorry, I. Yeah. yeah, so if I, if, we could, if I could just answer Aoife and then I'll pass the mic on to you, Mo. Um, so you've, you've timed your question perfectly because the person who took over from me running that community is sat right here. <laughs> um, so we did a three-month trial period of running them side by side where I was importing the Google groups into discourse every night, which was awful. <laughs> at the end of that, we took a community vote and decided to go for it, at which point I shut down the mailing lists and imported them finally into discourse. We moved over entirely. There were only two lists. It was a small community. I accept that, and that's, a, that's one of the challenges. But within days, we were finding users that would never have signed up to the developer mailing list come and offering their input respectfully in a good way into some of the development discussions that were going on. We were getting more feedback back more involvement and to Matthew's point about how we tend to silo things when we use individual lists that was exactly the problem we were trying to fix and it definitely worked and it worked quickly to this day they still use discourse for their work I think they're pretty happy with it we've not had really anybody come back going this is terrible can we go back to mailing lists it, that that just did not happen and just one one other thing in terms of um, so the Foreman community has some hardcore mailing lists uh, folks, and I see, I think there's one of, of those long serving um, community members, there's, there's one and he interacts solely with the discourse with, uh, via mail still. So he's managing to, pro and he, he reads everything, he responds to everything, and he's managing it all via uh, his own email client, which is, is definitely not uh, Google. I am 100% I'm sure of that. And just one, I had one other thing that I wanted. Oh yeah, in terms, uh, Mo, in terms of the anxiety around labeling and annoying people with mislabeling, I'm assuming, did you, you have done some, there's somebody responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of that. Well, that's part of what I was hoping to do in this discussion <laughs> okay. here. But well, it's okay, we're having another good discussion. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to derail that then. I just, I, so um, uh, I think it would be worth looking at if we can get actual data from communities who have made a full scale switch uh, on uh, not just like, okay, so you've got your individuals who were naysayers and now they've come around, but look at the uh, people who have never been naysayers and have just silently dropped off because it didn't fit their workflow. So for me, anecdotally, personally, I'm an old GNOME developer, GNOME switched uh, completely to discourse away from mailing lists. Now, I'm not extremely active anymore because it's not my day job and it's hard. Um, but, you know, so I, I found myself really keeping up with what was happening on mailing lists, and I just don't on, on the GNOME discourse. But I'm not, I wouldn't show up and you're like looking for naysayers who have come around. Because I'm not a nay, I'm, I've never gone on and been like, you can't use yeah. discourse. No, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to bike shed that or whatever. I just, don't yeah, find time yeah. to do it, so, you know. Let, let me add a contrary thing. I never followed what was going on on GNOME because I had to sign up for their mailing list and I didn't have, right? So, but now, I check the GNOME discourse as okay. one of the things I look at every week. Uh, what's going on in GNOME? Um, and actually, there's actually a pretty nice feature of, uh, you can have it send you an email every week of like a summary of highlights. So, like, I don't I, I actually that, check, yes. I don't check the Python one every, Every week, but I get that that email, and I say if there's like drama, I can be like, ah, oh, here's the exciting stuff, right? Like that's. Um, I would. That's how I am with Fedora. Like I get I get the email, I get the yeah. discourse email on a Friday, and I sit down and I get my popcorn ready, and I I go through yeah. it, and I, I enjoy it that way. I consume that. So, way. so this is the this is the uh, like this this is just page views here, and ignore the purple because that's the purple is all um, bots, but of. Uh, People, people actually page views of the system over time as we were going on here, and then this is when we merged in Ask Fedora. So obviously that has a pretty big jump there. Um, yeah, um, and annoyingly these graphs don't end on a month, even if they're barred by a month. That's bad, bad data presentation. But so there's been, there definitely was a lot of like you know pretty good growth over the time there in you know activity and you know. There. 
say. Matthew, I didn't come here to cause a drama. Yeah, that's okay. It's, and I'm no. not here to be Miss Anti-Discourse. I just want to say, just to be fair, I have tried a yeah. number of times over a I, number I, of years to build community. You can Google my username yeah. or whatever. Look up my yeah. username on Discourse. You will see where I made yeah. multiple attempts over a period of, of I guess, yeah. years at this point. Yeah. And I see you've, you've actually been still interacting on it, even I, despite you being I've frustrated given with it. Up. So I appreciate I've that. I've given up. Yeah. I tried. I, I'm just done with it. And I just want to say that I'm I'm trying to raise a social issue that I think doesn't just hit discourse, it hits a lot of things across open source. And I'm in return, oh well we can implement an NTTP or whatever, yeah. or I can do and it's always like right. use this script or use this this cool hack that I have to read a six page blog post to do. And I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in talking about the social discussion. And when I go to discourse, it feels a bit empty to me because there's key people who are deeply technical who I would like to weigh in when I make the effort to put a post on there, and I know that they're not logging in. So I need yeah. a draw. Like, it's about the content, not the software, not the technical. Yeah. You can write all the scripts you want. If this key developer that I want feedback from is not on there, why should I even bother? And I think yeah. it needs to be a social effort. We need to find those key people, identify them. If you are a member of a Fedora leadership committee, you, you need to wine and dine them and get them to commit to be on I'll here. I'll sit down with you in your tags, Mo. I, I don't, I'm not technically, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, but you are one of those people too. We need to get right? those That's, core people in here yeah. so that when people make and, a post on here, yeah. it's not just the discourse users weighing in and then you have to go over to the mailing list or track yeah. down the other people to get their opinion. Yep. For me, it's like the workflow stuff is fine. I'm a UX the, designer, I have a lot of opinions, but it's not about that, it's about the social stuff. Yeah. That's all I want to say. And, then, and, then, and I agree with you a lot. Um, and that's part of why I want to do a wholesale move because um, it, it, the halfway thing is painful for everybody. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, that's what I was trying to say. I wasn't saying um, it's about other people too, like, oh, you have to consider other people's opinions. I mean, what you were saying, you have to get all the people here and agree. You know, the tag problem is really we don't have a convention that everyone agrees on. This is where we talk about this thing, and now I can subscribe to that, and I'm, everyone's there. I see the discussion, right? So, yeah. And I guess another thing that tangentially related but important. Like this is an open source project and it's an active project where they have a lot of, like a, there, is, there is a good community around it and they are very responsive and some of the things like the filtering headers on tags are there because I said, hey, we need this and somebody was like, okay, cool. And they made a patch for it and like uh, they're very responsive and if there are other things I mean, there's, there's two approaches. There's some of the asking nicely has just worked or suggestions or finding things in the community, but also we are enterprise customers and if there are features and things that we really need them to develop to help make it easier for people, we can push them on those and maybe even find some money for development, um, although you know, money is... Um, like, uh, if I could just weigh in on oh. what Mo had, um, had mentioned around this social challenge. Yeah. <laughs> We have, it would be nice to be able to like have this, this platform, this space for people to come and hang out and have fun and, and find friends there and, and they should find that. But the, the long time, maybe deeply technical people who are holding out on the mailing list side of things that are meant to be actively um, involved in the Fedora project, pillars of the Fedora project, do they not have an obligation to the project that they are so deeply involved in to follow the project's decision to move to this and show up there for those who are struggling to find space there. Yeah. Since since we're in Ireland, I want to bring Guelga into it. Right, but that's the point. Don't you have an obligation? It's the country's first language. It's it's. No, 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 but I'm not saying that to criticize. I don't want anybody to feel bad. The point is, it's like a network effect. You need this core, like this, there's like a threshold you have to hit. And we still haven't hit it with this course. And I don't think it's like, I don't think it's on the individuals. Like, they need to have a compelling reason to log in and that bare minimum. So it's like, you go to the Grail talk, at least there's enough people around. But otherwise, you're in like Dublin or whatever, and you're trying to speak Irish to somebody, nobody. So you can't ever speak it, so you never get the opportunity. So that's what I'm saying is there needs to be like a bare minimum core group that, yeah, I, critical mass. That's the phrase I was trying to think of. We need the critical mass. 
So two things. I was just briefly talking with David, and um, we can actually filter on Gmail with X headers. I know because my Bugzilla emails coming into me are split into folders for Fedora 36, 37, 38. I do that with every release, and that's X Bugzilla reason and X Bugzilla um, release. Uh, are you, you're not doing that with a fancy script, do you think? I know, I'm doing that in Gmail filter. So I'll look that up and I'll make a post on how to do it, and you might even give me a login to, to this to do it. Okay, yeah. But, okay, so that's the one thing, and that might solve one problem. Uh, the other question I have is, if you are using email as the interface for people who've run this, um, I know if I reply to something, that's great. Can I start a new topic yeah. um, from email? Yes, you can start a new topic. Um, however, uh, that introduces the possibility of people impersonating other people, and uh, well, it does. If you uh, so, and we've had that problem on the Fedora mailing lists before, and I do not want it to happen again. So I'm I'm a little bit wary about that. So if we allow it, and also possible spam coming in, um, but we do actually have it enabled right now, where there's an email address which I have not publicized, but it goes to a special category where moderators can then. Um, so it's basically like a moderated uh, post, li new post list. So there's also um, no way for us to have scripts automatically post things to this as new category. Well, um, if you want, so if you want to do it by scripting, there's actually an API, and you can we have we have user API keys enabled, so you can generate an API key for yourself and post by a script. Um, so that's actually, and that's actually some of the things, you know, like um, yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. So I worry about this as well, Mo. I, I need Ansible to do the same critical mass problem. And we haven't launched yet, right? So I haven't even started. And I do have the same worry about bringing the deeply technical people across. The, other than really, really, really trying really hard to convince them really nicely, which is obviously part of the plan. Um, I am trying to do this with discourse groups. I don't know how much uh, Fedora is using groups, but I'm planning to rely on them pretty heavily. So we will have a group for each part of the project. So there will be core and there will be dev tools on AWX and Galaxy and so on. And the idea is that people can do at core or at AWX in a post. Yeah. And I, I want to be able to rely on the fact that somebody in that team will get that notification. Yeah. And that I can get feedback from that team because yeah. I don't want to be giving people burnout by saying, no, you have to reply. Yeah. I don't know, you may be on holiday, and I don't know yeah. that I should be bothering you, but if I can say, hey, design team, can someone respond to this? And I can have confidence that someone on the design team is going to see it, that's enough for me, I think. Let, we'll see how wait, it goes. Let me come back to that a bit, uh, about, uh, bot, about API posting. So this is a terrible Python script that I wrote, one of the ones that I mentioned, that you can look at if you want. Um, it, that basically it listens to Fed message. And if there's a new council ticket posted, it automatically posts a uh, topic here. Because well, this, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so because one of the problems, I, that, like I say, uh, having user, when, when there's a discussion in, in, in the, in like, Fedora council ticket repository there, like very few people see that. And so I wanted to make, and Fesco has this problem as well, where there's supposed to be a develop list conversation, but instead people talk on the ticket, and then you get at best split conversation, but sometimes a hundred post Fesco ticket of people repeating each other and no moderation tools, and it's a mess. Uh, really no threading, not even just kind of hidden threading. So anyways, this bot basically, um, that may be not the most exciting ticket to have picked here, it's <laughs> great, but um, so it's, somebody files a ticket and on the ticket it automatically posts a thing linking to the topic and saying please discuss there and then we mostly do the discussion in, and so that's one example of a bot that does the posting um, and uh, yeah, then on groups, uh, so we actually have a, um, uh, yeah, uh, a, a bridge here, and this runs um, a, it's, it was a CPE little mini project to make this bridge that it, uh, for reasons, runs out of cron every 20 minutes or something, and syncs, uh, if there's a fast group, if the name of a group here matches the fast group, it uh, writes the fast membership to this group. Um, so, uh, is it new? yes, it oh, is new. Right. 
Right, yeah, so now you do not have to do that. That is automatically synced. In fact, I, I, I renamed it to design team the same way it is in FAST. No, no, that's a different thing that I was overzealous about. I'm sorry. But but yeah yeah yeah. So actually, I can show, so that it, so it, I guess uh, in other words, that actually is a thing because there is there is a packagers group and there is the um, so one of the things I did. This is also to actually to address another problem Mo highlighted, which is we've got people who are long-standing Fedora community members. They come to Discourse. And Discourse has a system of escalating trust where new users can't post links or images because they're probably spammers. Um, but if somebody is actually a Fedora project member for a long time, they come and they try to post those. It's kind of an off-putting experience and we don't trust you. So uh, one of the things you can do here is uh, this one here. Uh, so automatically if someone is a member of the uh, contributors group, which is people who are, uh, Kevin, what's the, is it one? You're in at least one group that's not the FPCA or whatever. Yeah, so uh, automatically get this and you automatically when you sign in get bypass the first level thing to trust level one so that you're uh, at the basic permissions of the thing. So, so we can do things like that for groups. Um, this is also where you can set, I don't have a title here, but this is where you can like put like design team by your name. This is the, the title of, of that can be allowed there. Um, and uh, there are a lot of groups in FAST, so I didn't try to make all of the FAST groups here. That would be ridiculous um, and a lot of overhead. But uh, anybody who, if you want this for your team to go there and then um, the thing about uh, having your team to be messaged, I haven't turned that on by default, but that's a, a, is a possibility here under interaction. Um, we, can, you can, we can change y y who, who the group is visible to, and I, this, these are kind of set arbitrarily for the groups right now because we don't have standards for what it should be. Um, but uh, right now, so the design team can be mentioned by anybody, and that will generate a notification for everybody on the design team. It will also, because there's above like 16 members, it will give them a warning, like, hey, you're about to notify 33 people. Is that really what you meant to do? Um, and so for this one, I have that turned on. For the um, contributors group, I don't have that turned on because that would be really, really annoying. Um, and other teams might, you should, this should be able to you decide on teams whether you want to do that. There's also messaging, which is turned on for this one, and that lets you send private messages to the group. Um, so I'm going to go and turn, turn that off right now. Yeah, nobody, nobody, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's, I, I'm not really fond of that one, but um, that's, there's a possibility. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, what I did, one of the things you can do here is make it so that when someone joins that group, you can change their notification settings so that if they join the design team, they're automatically getting notifications for the design team tag. And, right, and then, yeah, um, so I thought, hey, we've got this new thing for package reviews. I'll make it so people who are um, in the package group get notification when they get a, um, when there's a new post there. And, you know, that was a little bit of a, um, I should have, should have not done that. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and honestly, I wasn't thinking about email as a notification thing, but I've got my email notifications turned off and I, uh, I was just thinking, oh yeah, they'll get a little one there when there's a new thing, not, which is less of an obnoxious thing than getting a bunch of emails sent to you. It's actually not though, so like, yeah. think about Q stuff. That oh yeah, that can be, a, yeah. It's, it's same, it becomes, yeah. It loses meaning. Yeah. yeah, well, so the idea was hopefully to make it be of you know, people that it's relevant to, and the packagers group is too big for that. But something for the design team, it might make sense in a, a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to answer this uh, question or problem about uh, writing and expecting certain people from the community to, to, to respond. Uh, essentially, I think that we can expect that people who are active in the community will at least have uh, notifications of their choice enabled, and if they're uh, mentioned by name in the uh, in a post, they will get a notification and do something with the notification that makes sense for them. So I, I think it's actually uh, better than the situation that we had before. I mean, uh, maybe just putting uh, everybody in uh, in the address list of an email, and then this person getting. Um, replies for the next two two months is not <laughs> the best choice. Yeah. 
there's one other thing that I don't know if you can, you probably can't demonstrate it here. Uh, in the admin settings of the chat integration, you can also say when a group gets a message, push it to a chat platform right. as well. So again, you could say if the design team gets a notification, also send it to a matrix room. Yeah. 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 So, Mo, I promised you I would do that and that I didn't. But um, yeah, there we are, chat that, so that is chat integrations and that is... Yeah. Uh, that one's active, but here, this is, so the first posts in the announcement, in announcements, um, you can set these things up and it, tri on these different triggers. And um, so I guess this, I forget I think, exactly I think it's under it type. Up, I think it's under type group mentioned rather than first post is what I'm thinking of. But yeah, yeah. but there's a whole um, bunch of ways to push things to chat platforms. So yeah, if you mention uh, magazine editors in a post here, they get a they get a message in their, in their uh, matrix channel saying, "Hey, somebody mentioned the ma the magazine editors." Uh, what um, IRC through matrix if the bridge decides to be working at the time. Um, so. Um, yeah, so one of the other things, though, um, I asked CPE to look at is maybe making, um, so there is a webhook so that when, um, when there are posts, that actually goes to the message bus that a post, someone's made a post. Um, and so you could theoretically get notifications off of that and make some sort of thing to, to follow that. But maybe it would be useful to make something that goes to uh, the, the FMN replacement, whatever, is it called FMN still? Yeah. Good, that's good, good choice. Um, <laughs> the, 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 so that you could actually, if you wanted to manage all your Fedora notifications in one place, uh, and that, that's a little bit of development work to make that bridge, but if that would be useful to people, we could you know, um, go further than an investigation for that. Um, and I think that goes to IRC, right? Does this mean that we will soon be able to do like uh, Koji builds via this course? Uh, I, uh, I mean, can you do them via IRC or? Uh, I, we need I mean, the FMN plugin, but. Yeah, I mean, we could. You know, you, Koji builds via IRC is the thing already? Yes, and then you have to do that by posting messages with, yes, that would be probably a very tedious way to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, there, there are all sorts of fun integrations we could do, because it's... You can do something, but exactly, exactly, yeah, so true, yeah. Um, um, are we at... Or, uh, uh, I just had a question. Uh, if I, and I came in late, if a group wants to request one of these integrations to have one of these turned on, what would we do to make that kind of request? Post, post in the uh, help category there. And um, so this is actually part of what I wanted to do this with this session, but we'll do another time. Right now, because this kind of evolved like that, this has been run as like my pet fiefdom of design decisions and what gets turned on and how things go, which is a bad way to do things in Fedora. It was fine when there were 20 people on there, but when, if we're moving it to a big platform, we really need to move this to being a actual team. Um, so if you're interested in being part of that team, please talk to me because we need to, we need to create that because it shouldn't be just me. Um, is anyone in here a moderator on this? I, Kevin? I that yeah. Or yeah. It is, the moderator -like. Yeah. So, so it is another, another feature is that uh, as you interact with the site, you can get up, you kind of like Stack Exchange, you get more ability to do things like retag posts and so on, so that if you see that somebody as happens fairly frequently, somebody posts a question about Fedora in the help section, which um, says site help, but you know, whatever, people looking for help, um, you can move it to the right place. Um, and, and you don't have to be a moderator to do that. Oh, right. And so you can also have, you, if uh, this, this gets into kind of the weeds about how discourse organization works, but uh, different categories can have different moderators and that you can actually do that by a group. So I've set it so that for the change proposals, um, that category, uh, all FESCO members are moderators there so they can see what's going on and have more control of things. So how does um, that compare like to the TL whatever? Uh, is that it is per group fairly or complicated. Is that... No, that's site-wide. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's, that, that, it, there's a very complicated table of how the permissions can be, and some of them are configurable. But uh, see, is there anything else important I should say? Yeah, other than uh, people who want to help me, please come help. Um, 
uh, people who have concerns about this, I hope I can continue to make them less of concerns in various ways. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, well, so, so script this thing, implement this thing is part one of the ways to solve some of the frictions, but it doesn't solve the problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, uh, one of the, like, there is a lot here, and, but that's kind of a consequence of Fedora is big. Uh, and so any place where we try to centralize things and bring things together, there's going to be a lot, and that's a design problem. And uh, honestly, like I said, this is my design. So I'm not a designer. So there, and it actually, there's some stuff which is kind of inherent to the site, but there are other things which could really be changed in pretty big ways to make them better. I know you don't like the drop downy thing. That's pretty intrinsic, but just kind of the overall look and layout and things like, there's a lot of things that we could actually um, improve with, um, it, it, it's got a, um, like, it has a whole bunch of things here um, where you can do a custom CSS and a bunch of things, and, and things are fairly well marked for customization. Actually, the. It's a proper user research design process for how to categorize things. So. Yeah. Um, and I would, at some point, love to talk with you about that. But how much? We're probably running out of time here, right? It's actually time for the next session. However, I checked the schedule, and there is nothing else in this room, so you're not blocking right. it. That's fine as long as I have some water. <laughs> My thing says that this is over at 255. Uh, my question is. Uh, I, I do have to moderate the panel about CentOS, Rocky, Alma, that's so on. After. In what? There's a break. There's like a. Yeah, but not too there. long from now, I'm just saying. So I should save my voice a little bit. Um, <laughs> Um, I guess my question is, uh, whose decision ultimately is it to get rid of the devil list in favor of discussion? The and devil what about list, if yes. There's not, Nicely, and, yes. And what um, about if there's not consensus to do that? Yeah, so um, I, I think it ultimately ends up being a Fedora Council level decision because it gives that high. But uh, for the changes, the, the change proposal to move there, like uh, that's a FESCO decision because the change process is a FESCO process. And if FESCO says we want to keep this on a mailing list, uh, you know, um, I, I'll try to convince FESCO otherwise, but it's ultimately FESCO process, so it should go where FESCO wants well, it to go. Okay, so to Mo's point, we need to have reasons for developers to stop using the mailing list and want to use this. So the change proposal idea, yes, we've learned from that. We're gonna make some changes and keep moving forward. But other things, like people announce the license changed in this package, or things like that, we can start shifting categories yeah. of content yeah. off the mailing list to here, but to do it as a flag day operation, I think would be off-putting to too many people. Yeah, and I don't know if that, that's exactly what I proposed yeah. a couple months ago, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, moving some things that make it worthwhile to come is a useful thing to do, and maybe gigantic change, uh, controversial change proposal wasn't the first thing I would have picked in retrospect, but it was definitely educational. Well, yeah, we, we learned stuff, you know, that, that's fine. <laughs> Like for example, we're all at Flock. There's a lot of people at home, maybe watching this stream, are very angry at me for starting discussion off mic. Sorry, <laughs> but um, like if I go to discourse right now, there's no mention of like the video streams or what's live right now or what's happening. If you go to the front page, right? Yes, um, and right? that's because we're all here, right? It, um, no, but, we're not uh, all here, well, well, and that's yeah, compelling that's content a, that would bring yeah. people to this. If if you had a discourse discussion for every single session, and instead of having yeah. the comments in Sketch.org or wherever. Or on Twitter or whatever. I would love to move away. Have the comments per Sorry, session, sketch. and then they post their. Move away from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then oh oh hey Matt gave a talk about blah blah blah. You know let's link that over to the actual discussion. Like you know the benefits that he was saying for for Foreman right is you have all the lists basically in one place, so you can do cross referencing a lot better. Yeah. You can do cross referencing. Well, well there was a flock talk on that. Here's the thread. That kind of that's stuff. a really good idea. But that's the thing is, it's about the content. It's not yeah. about the scripts or the text. Okay, all right. Just say. <laughs> yeah, if a, 
Thank you, Mike Volunteer, for keeping running back and forth. <laughs> So I definitely used the wrong choice of word when I said obligation earlier. I meant like... You've been feeling bad about it. I have, since. I have, I because know. I didn't mean it to sound like, you know, you have to do this. But if most suggestion to like create the content in discourse or in discussion is, is the right way to go about it. And as people who are long-term contributors in the project, and you know that this change has been approved and we're trialing it, that, that's what I mean about it's probably a responsibility that if you have an announcement that you want to make about a package retirement or something, and you know discourse is where we're supposed to be talking about this, you should have an obligation. Yeah. You have a bit of a responsibility to like play ball with the project and post there even if you don't like it, to start generating that content, to just be showing up there. So yeah. that's, that's what I was getting to, and it didn't sound right the first time I said it, sorry. <laughs> um, along those lines, the next time we have a change proposal go, because so, so our plan is to still send them to develop announce because that announcement broadcast makes a lot of sense. Um, and then uh, we put a message in there at the top saying, please go here to discuss this, yeah. and yet, Yes, everyone ignored that. So um, I guess I'd like to ask people to not ignore that. And if you see somebody ignoring it, gently redirect them. Um, we can do um, some more harsh things where we, like, uh, we've done this before. You can kill the thread in Mailman where it will not accept any more replies to that topic, that uh, thread. But I, that seems draconian. I don't want to do that. I'd rather, if we can... Uh, Help, please help redirect people next time. Hopefully it will not be so controversial, and I hope we can get more people, um, you know. I, I want, I do want to bring people along. That's... Uh, will the change request to turn off the mailing list and move everybody to discourse be posted on discourse? Yeah, only on discourse. <laughs> no, no, no announcement for that one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> post our engagement is and I was trying like I really made an effort you can look it up oh, yeah. and yeah and it's like no and I get it I get it but it's like so, there needs to be more than just a bunch of core contributors doing their darnest to post stuff on here you know what I mean? like it has to be yeah. there has to be a social support system for that but actually uh, the discussion about the uh, telemetry proposal showed that there is a huge mass of people already posting on discussion. Uh, well, there were a good amount of posts where it said, like, this is this first person's post, and then that first post was like, you all suck, I hate you, I'm not <laughs> Right. And uh, yes, but there, there was also a number of posts from other people from the community who have been around for a while, and a large number of posts which were like prefixed by this person posted last time in five years, uh, welcome them again, or something like that. Do we have a way to assess, like, for example, like, okay, now this is scripting and data and whatever, but to say, you know, for the people who are in Fedora, and again, like, I would suggest, like, team leadership, um, Fedora project leadership, the big committees and stuff like that, what percentage of them are post on discourse more than once a month? Uh, and then look at that as a metric and can we make that higher? Um, can we raise the yeah, percentage? Yeah. And what percentage would we like to see? We can definitely do that. Akash has some thoughts. Um, we also, this was actually was a question on the survey. Um, it wasn't a very, it was a, a broad question about what uh, place, the, uh, where you engage uh, with Fedora, and uh, I know that discussion was fairly high on that, higher than the Devel list, but I don't know about that broken down by, so in, in that there were, um, like, I forget the numbers, but several times more people who identified as users only as than contributors, so we can break that down by contributors and see what the numbers but are. Where I got too. the idea is and you mentioned it has some tracking, like this person hasn't been here in five years, so it must store some data value for each account. This yeah. is the last time they posted. Yeah. So could that be mapped to the FAST accounts? Yeah. And, and then you get a list of the, the FAST user IDs that are in leadership positions, and then you have right. your number. So there is a um, data explorer here. Yeah, I was and, just going to say it's literally and, a Postgres database under the hood, right? So you can figure all this stuff out if you if you go digging about in it. And, and and Mo, like this is some of the stuff that like I love about Discourse. It's got these things where uh, sorry, <laughs> let me spill water on my laptop. I'm so excited. Um, I'm showing it on my it's wrong screen here. Uh, this had like here you can actually do uh, SQL queries of the database, yeah, that's what and I was you can about. make reports that can be sent to people automatically, or that people can query in different groups can query. Uh, or it can be pulled by the API pretty easily. 
What's that? Um, I, so the project that Lenka and David worked on, uh, yeah. it's discourse to fed message. Oh, no. discourse to Fedora Thank messaging. Um, it doesn't have the uh, historical data because it just got oh. completed and just got okay. deployed, but um, uh, I think that it's going to be of great help to, uh, you know, map the information pertaining to certain accounts as to how many posts they make or they react with and uh, the stuff that they've been up to, you know? And that can uh, generate some great metrics that we can probably make use of to, uh, to cost if it's something that's going forward, you know, for yep. certain groups, for certain tags, or to certain users as well, that how frequently they make use of a certain platform. Yep. For uh, one, one thing that I like is your posts are tied to your FAST account, whereas email is not. Um, you can obviously make up a new FAST account if you want it to be more anonymous, or you can you know, do whatever. Um, we don't, it isn't necessarily, you can be anonymous, is what I'm trying to say, uh, but it is tied to your FAST account in a way that email addresses are not necessarily, so it actually makes it a lot easier to do some of those metrics as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, by the way. Um, so yes, on the the obligation to use the platform we've decided to migrate to, I agree with that. But at the same time, being elected to Fezco, being on the council. I also have an obligation to interact with the community where they are. And if the community has not completely moved to this new platform, I can't compel them to. I, like, so I have to be in more than one place at a time. And that is frustrating to me because I see that we haven't had a compelling reason for people to come over. So developers, going back to that, they would post on discourse but say, well, I don't know that I reached the people that I wanted to. I don't, I don't know that the people who I wanted to see that saw it, so I went to the mailing list. So this is, this is one of those things where we have, like, again, to Mo's point, it, it, we have to have the social aspect there to get people on board. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, I do have complaints about the technical issues, but you know, that's, that's my own doing. That's just the kind of, that's how I use a computer. But, Anyways, I, yes, we have to be where the users are and we have to get them on discourse. Mo, Mo I'm looking at one of your posts here. Are I you calling it. bullshit on me? Yeah, I'm calling bullshit engagement. on you. Look at this. The thing <laughs> is, no, wait, but the thing about it is that, like, number one, I posted this for a very specific reason. I was providing a design specification and I needed feedback within a certain time period to make changes. Like, this is, that's a done deal, it's implemented, it's up. Yeah. Look at the title, right? But people still hit it. I don't really know why. But like when I needed that feedback at the time, I, I wasn't getting it. But it got posted in some news article or something like Foreignix or whatever. And then that drove a lot of people to see it. But it was after the fact. It was like, well, sorry, the, the feedback period is over, sorry. And some of this too is like people showing up at the popcorn and their comfy socks and because you know there's this back and forth and yeah. it was a good I mean that there is good discussion there but you know you didn't instance, you didn't see the, you didn't see the names you wanted to see I didn't that? see like for example this was the workstation page where is the workstation yeah. working group members well, I to, I'm not trying to call yeah. anybody out I'm just saying well, like this is so a very specific example I, I, we've also had a workstation work a, and in desktop team people not want to respond on Fedora mailing list. A lot of people don't read the devel list because so th there, there's another another side to this of people who are important Fedora contributors who do not participate in our mailing lists Absolutely. because of their uh, you know, things that we can. And I think part of this too is maybe I didn't tag it right or maybe I didn't yeah. put the right I don't know at hash whatever yeah. it could be. Oh. Oh, so yeah, no. It's also February. Yeah, so it was, yeah. Let's see what other ones I can find. I'm, I'm dragging this back off the screen because when I click on Mo's name, it shows the administrative view of her account and I don't want to. <laughs> I've got two questions that I, I wanted to, to ask. And partly because I came in really late, so I, I might have missed some of this, but I was just looking back around, thinking around the, the topic of moving to the community team and I was wondering what the, 
the scope was for we kind didn't, of, we didn't get there. <laughs> then I guess then my follow up question is then what kind of things from your perspective as the driver and owner of discourse, what are the things that you feel you need from other people to help make this be a successful transition? Um, so I would like help forming that team. So that would be that would be good. Um, I think the feedback of you know uh, m making sure we have pe uh, reasons for people to go there. I think the suggestion of flock like that that's really good. Um, I guess people who are interested in in developing those kind of things rather than because like, I was thinking more along the lines of you know running the site and. Uh, moderation and those kind of things that we need to worry about and make it not just me making decisions. Um, but I think people who are maybe interested in helping you know, build content around Flock or other events and things and content for the site, I think that's a useful thing. Um, and I guess other you know, people to give it a chance, I guess. Um, thank you for giving it a chance, Mo. Um, and um, yeah, I guess that's my immediate answers to that. I'll help with design. What's that? I've, I'll help with design. Okay. Um. I'd be very happy to join in and share what we can do between Ansible and Fedora as well, because we can both learn these lessons. Yeah. Right? We've got the exact same set of problems. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, is anybody involved deeply here, deeply involved in Python? And I, I don't know if I guess I'm Miro here. No, but I do know Yeah, so uh, this is so yeah. So Python dev got migrated at least. That's the. All right. Uh, I think we're. Oh, you got. No, I was just going to ask if there is, uh, since you're forming a group, is there any kind of opportunity? Because uh, for some of the DEI stuff, uh, I know we use uh, Matrix for synchronous meetings right now, but I'd like to maybe throw my hand up to say we'd like to experiment moving away from synchronous because I think a lot of folks are struggling with the time zone issue and being able to run a, a meeting of sorts using discourse. I'd love to be able to try to experiment that yeah. and try to figure out how to do that. Oh, I'm sorry, I set off the fire alarm. Huh. Did I? All right, well, I guess we're done here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>